make a long story short, finally at the end of school, while well, Uncle Sam got geared up, got, got enough supplies and everything, that they told me I was going to go get my basic training under the U.S. Army. I'd already had it under ROTC, but they're going to give it to me under the U.S. Army. So went down to Fort Sill again, got all of us that were going there, signed us up in the Army, put us on a train. We didn't know where we were going, didn't have an idea, any idea. Next thing I knew was at Camp Roberts, California, out in the Pacific Ocean. And Camp Roberts at that time had 50,000 buck privates that they were training, real buck privates. And they had to complete that basic before they could do anything. It had the biggest parade ground I've ever seen. Had one of the finest groups of soldiers I've ever seen. And lo and behold, while we was out there, remember when the Japs came up and shelled Santa Barbara? This scared the living hell out of the whole state of California. <laughs> Jap subs came up there and shot every shell they had. All the California people, if you all remember, <laughs> We had ration cards in those days. Anybody that didn't get a special ration got four gallons a month. I think that's what it was. <laughs> Pretty close. Those California people jumped their cars and drove four gallons worth and started hitchhiking. <laughs> they was getting away from that Pacific Ocean. Lo and behold, the general in charge of Camp Roberts came down and took the whole camp out there, 50,000 of us, whether you'd finished basic training or not. And we went out there to, just in case the Japs did have something out there that we really didn't want to get involved with. But we got rid of them on that deal. What I remember was going out there, I didn't know such places existed. We plastered across, the, went close to a place called San Simeon, most lavish, home I have ever seen, right out in the middle of nowhere, and old William Randolph Hearst in those days, I knew what was going on when I saw her. The movie queen was named Marion Davies, this is a long time ago. And after that, when I'd take my men out on the forced march or a drill or something like that, we'd always go by the old place there to see how William Randolph Hearst and Marion were getting along. My men had all here that say, oh, Sergeant T-Bone, he sure as hell knows where to take us. <laughs> they loved it. They'd get up early in the morning to go out there. Well, we got back to basic, finished everything up. Lo and behold, I didn't even leave the premises. They made me a first sergeant there at Camp Roberts, and they had two mule pack divisions that was up there in the mountains that nobody even knew about. One was the 89th Combat Infantry Division. They were going to be a mule pack division. The other one was the 71st Infantry Division. There's going to be a mule pack division. They put me in with the mule packers. I went right along with the mule packers. Learned a lot. We showed them the place I'd never heard of. Biggest secret in the United States, and I'll tell y'all, you're Oklahomans. Hunter Liggett Military Effort Reservation. How many of you ever heard of it? We didn't even know it existed. There they've been practicing going through combat ever since the first day that World War II started. And actually they had mules. They were getting ready to use those 89th and 71st wherever they invaded. If they had mountains or anything, well, I'll give you a million guesses in the first 999, 999,000 don't count. They're going to send us up there. But when we got back, Camp Roberts again, all of a sudden, I brought a picture of it today. They decided they're going to send us overseas. And we were ready. And they put us on a train. Started just out, we didn't know where we was going. They didn't tell us. They didn't want us to know. So everybody was asking me, they'd say, Sergeant T-Bone, where do you think we're going? I said, I don't know where in the hell we're going, but I'll be glad when we get there. Because <laughs> I'm getting sick and tired of that train. 
we went all the way to Camp Butner, North Carolina, which is down by Winston-Salem. Stayed there and got some loose ends taken care of by the <laughs> service of supply. Went up to Boston, Massachusetts and shipped out. Now, we didn't know where we was going. They picked my brain again. They said, Sergeant T-Bone, where are we going? I said, I don't know. They said, well, we must be going to Africa. He said, they're fighting down in Africa. I said, that doesn't mean a thing. I said, you guys ever hear of a place called the Suez Canal? Oh. I said, this is a shortcut to the South Pacific. I said, we may be going to the South Pacific. I don't know. I said, I don't try to outguess the Army. And we got there and we hit Morocco. Went into the main places there in Morocco and the Germans were there in all their glory and we were beginners and we kind of got our bell rung several times, but we stayed. And they never did run us off. And the men in my company, their backbone was touching their navel. And I'll tell you something about it. it. was in General Patton's army, but we never had seen him. And he had a big job, and a big time to take it to. But the only things that men used to say to General Patton, all he ever orders is ammunition and gasoline. If you want something to eat, you've got to get it yourself. And that was just about the truth. And we saw a place where a bunch of Arabs had really messed up and made fools of themselves. So being an old country boy from Edmond, Oklahoma, we killed 160 of their camels. And they changed countries. <laughs> they left. They got as far away from there as they could. I was lucky. I had several Navajo Indians that was in my company that had never been off the reservation until they came to the Army. They skinned all those camels and made chili out of them. <laughs> I had a mess sergeant from Anadarko, Oklahoma, named Bert McVay. Bert is in heaven now. General Patton, Patton heard that all of us old boys in my company were getting fat. So he came up and stayed with us 10 days and ate more than anybody. <laughs> I never seen anybody that could eat like General Patton could. And he's the world's greatest custer in the history of the world. But uh, besides that, I liked him. I liked the way he operated. All he wanted to do was win. And he didn't care what happened. And he had dyslexia. He was born with it. And he was having, giving him a terrible time. He went to West Point five years. You're supposed to just go forward. But the reason they let General Patton go five years was he was the best pentathlon man in the United States Army. He was on the same Olympic track team in 1912 with Jim Thorpe. And Jim Thorpe won the decathlon in the Olympics that year, if you all remember. And General Patton won the pentathlon. So when I really got acquainted with General Patton, he was one of the shrewdest men I've ever known, also one of the most violent. He was the greatest cusser I've ever known in the history of mankind. I mean, he won first prize regardless. <laughs> Whew. He'd curl your hair.